But listen, here's the deal, everybody. Basically, Chris Jericho and MJF go to dinner. And first, they try to one-up each other. MJF orders a 20-ounce porterhouse. I mean, come on. That's the cut you wanted? Anyway. He wants it well done because he's a heel. And Jericho says, Ha! Ah, I want mine medium well. And then MJF has to one-up him. Ah, make it medium! And then they go down and down until finally Jericho gets, I want it blue! And of course, you can't go any lower than that, so the lady goes to put their order in. So from there... Long story short, it breaks down into a Broadway number. And Jericho and MJF, they're singing, they're dancing, they got dancing women behind them. I mean, it's the most preposterous thing that you've ever seen. I was crying as I watched this. If you want to add, by the way, to the list of things that MJF is great at, I mean, Jericho obviously is a rock star. MJF, that was MJF. Singing. He was so good that at first I was like, God, did they get someone like doing, and he's like lip syncing. They got somebody else to do the, no, that was MJF. He is a very, very talented man. So they do their whole song and dance number. It is objectively incredible. Whether you subjectively liked it or not, I mean, I don't care. But objectively, the performance was unbelievable by these two guys. And then they sit back down again, and they announce that next week will be the town hall. Now, I will get into the criticism first, because there have been some criticisms. Some people just didn't like a song and dance number on a wrestling show. They thought it was ridiculous. Some people were like, wait a second. They were supposed to meet to decide whether MGF was going to join, and then next week they've got a they've got a town hall meeting to determine whether he'll join, but these guys are the best friends. Listen, maybe they could have had the announcer say something about it afterwards, but in my opinion, as a viewer, I believe that Chris Jericho and MGF are totally on the same page. They both are dying to have MGF join the inner circle. And the holdup is the rest of the inner circle. It's been like this from the day they started this angle. MJF goes into the room, and, and Sammy hates him, and Sammy doesn't trust him, and Jericho says he might be telling the truth, or whatever it was that Jericho said. Jericho has always trusted MJF. Now, MJF, I believe in the end, months down the road, I believe that MJF is probably going to turn on Chris Jericho, and he'll lead the inner circle, and they'll all kick Chris Jericho out, and the storyline goes from there, and Chris Jericho is going to be a huge babyface. All right, But in the meantime... I, as a viewer, believe that Jericho wants MJF in the inner circle because he respects him. MJF wants into the inner circle because he wants to ultimately take it over. But right now, both guys are on the same page, and they're two totally douchey heels that think that everything that they do is awesome, and they do this song and dance number on AEW Dynamite. And this, I'm sure, will probably be explained down the road. Maybe it won't, but... I had absolutely no problem with it in storyline, but I know that some people do. And if you feel that as a viewer, not enough of this has been explained to you or you're not sure what's going on, that's fine. I can't even really argue that. I mean, somebody said, you know, Brian, this is very much like when, when WWE does something and it doesn't make sense and they leave it up to you to create the storyline in your own head. Maybe that's the case. But you know what? A lot of times when I watch AEW and there's not enough information given to me, I do create a story in my own head, and quite frankly, nine times out of ten, that's actually the storyline, and it's later explained to me where everything is going. So, anyway, I thought the thing was great. We had a poll on Twitch.tv, and I believe it was 87% of people loved the dinner debonair. 13% of people did not. As always, from looking at the chat right here, the 13% that did not enjoy it are flabbergasted that 87% liked it, but hey... It's subjective, and I would say that in looking at my own feedback, I would say that probably 80% of the, 87% of the people that contacted me also loved it, but there were people that did not like it, and you were welcome to love it or hate it. I mean, obviously, the idea behind it was nobody expected it, and trust me, if going in, this is what you thought Dinner Debonair was going to be, you need to buy some lottery tickets, because I can't imagine anybody thinking this was the way it was going. So Mike, I believe, is now here. Mike, what did you make of this dinner debonair? 
you know, in hindsight, we, we probably should have known the way this thing was going, uh, especially being named Dipper, Dinner Debonair. Um, first of all, from a creative point of view, uh, that was a Sammy Davis and Frank Sinatra number that they did, which means I bet you they had to probably go through some work with the Sinatra estate and things like that, that, you know, they probably spent some money. And Actually, the story I was told was that they thought they were going to have to do that, but then I don't know if they found like a... They found a way around it. Like, I didn't know how much, you know, anybody... I Again, the only thing I will say is... They I found know a they usable put, version. Yes, and they put real work into this right up until it was showtime. So I will say this from a forget about the on-screen point of view. They hustled a lot to get this thing. Now, what you thought of them imitating Stewie and Brian, imitating Frank and Sammy, uh, that's up to you, you know. And it was definitely Frank and Sammy. Absolutely it was. It was it was not Stephen Eady, uh, you know, RIP to grandma. She liked Stephen Eady. But anyway, the, regardless of that, what matters is there's a lot of truths. There's a lot of truths to this. If you if you are have, keep saying to yourself, this isn't my pro wrestling, odds are it's not. So what I would suggest you probably do is if you want to vicariously live through one someone else and get angry about AEW, I guess you could do that. But why even bother at this point? There is so much out there. New Japan, what Ring of Honor is doing with the Pure Tournament, MLW, a zillion things out there, including your own tape libraries, where I don't know if consistently throwing salt in somebody else's soup when it comes to AEW does anybody any good. AEW fans... Regardless of what you personally thought of this, I would guarantee I was going to say nine out of ten people. The, from what you're saying and what the chat, I'm not saying that's everybody, but the nine out of ten people probably that are AEW fans really like this. Did it belong on a wrestling show? You can make the case that it didn't. The timing of it, why they decided to do it, I, there's a zillion things you can say about it, and all of them it, it is going to have some truth to it. But I think the bottom line is, is if this was anybody else, even on AEW, it probably wouldn't have worked as well, and I wouldn't suggest you do this too often. But as far as that sight gag, if they want to throw that stuff in there, regardless of how you think this sits in the history of pro wrestling, it doesn't really matter. They're there to entertain their fan base. Will it grow their fan base? I don't know. But did it satisfy probably 90% of the people that were watching? Yes, it did. So I, I can't, I don't have a strong opinion either way about it because the other opinions out there are so strong about it that I just kind of have to shrug a little bit. I, this is not going to ruin my day. Would I have done it on the show? No, I, I don't think I would have. I would have saved it for like the Christmas episode or something like that. But it doesn't matter what I think. This isn't my, my wrestling and it doesn't have to be my wrestling. And that's what I think a lot of people need to remember. It's not yours. And if you look at it as if this isn't mine, that's fine. It's somebody else's. Let them have it. I thought it was fantastic. I think that if you tried to do this with almost anybody else, I think it would have crashed and burned. Like, I think that during the invasion angle, because I'm watching it right now, if Vince and Steve Austin had done this, I think they would have pulled it off. Because every single solitary segment that I've seen these guys together in, whether they're adversaries or friends... They're just absolutely the greatest. Maybe a Kevin Owens and a Sami Zayn could have pulled it off because Sami is so wacky. But, I mean, if you look up and down the rosters of both shows, I mean, I can't think of very many people that could have pulled this off. And I, I understand what you're saying about waiting for Christmas, but, like, there's a storyline here. And he's going to be in the inner circle, I presume, sooner rather than later. And this was a wacky way to build up that storyline.